Hello and welcome to our online service today and happy Valentine's Day. We hope for you to have a fantastic day today. In light of today being Valentine's Day, here is a fun trivia question for you to guess the answer. How many cards are sent on Valentine's Day each year? Let us know in the comment section below. Today we are going to be hearing from Pastor Daryl on the second part of our new series, It's All About Love, where we learn more about God's love for us and for others. So stay tuned for that. And for all our kids who are watching, Pastor Susan has prepared a special activity for you today. So head on to our church website and go to our online page to get your activity for today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that we have this awesome privilege to come together on this online service. Lord, as we celebrate Valentine's Day today, we think of your great love for us that has been poured out for us, that has been uh, given to us, Lord God. And I pray that God, that today, that as we worship you from wherever we are watching this from, that the presence of God would fill our hearts, that we would remember the strong and amazing love of God, Lord, that pursues us, that fights for us, that keeps us, that holds us. Thank you, Father, that we have this opportunity to come together. We pray that you would bless this service now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
Valentine's Day APC. We're so glad that you've been able to join us online this morning. We'd love to hear from you, so drop us a quick hello in the chat below if you're on Facebook, or you can always send us a message through our website. We'd love to know who's here with us each and every week. A quick reminder for all of our members, we're going to be having our annual business meeting on February the 28th, so not too far from now. Please watch your email for all of those details. And don't forget to complete your Valentine's Day escape room. If you didn't receive the email, shoot us a message and we're going to make sure you get a game kit. We don't want anyone to miss out because it's a fun way to explore God's word for yourself or together with your family. And for the month of February, we're going to be raising funds to support the local out of the cold. Out of the Cold provides safe, respectful, and welcoming overnight accommodations and meals to those experiencing homelessness in our community. If you would like to partner with us, label your donation Out of the Cold when giving online. Thank you so much in advance for all of your support. Now, let's hear part two of our new series, All About Love. Well, thank you for joining us online today. And by the way, happy Valentine's Day. This is a day where love is expressed, romance is at mountain peak heights, and relationships are started, and even some of them are brought to the next level. If you haven't done so already, I would suggest that you go grab some flowers, some chocolates, order takeout, Chinese food. Oh, it's exceptional. Uh, and tell that special person in your life that you love them. It isn't too late. Valentine's Day is all day. Wink, wink. Last Sunday, we began a new series called It's All About Love. Good theme for Valentine's Day. It's all about love. We discovered that to be truly known as Christ's disciple would be determined by the level of Christ's love we display for others to see. Jesus said himself to his disciples in John 13, 35, By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Loving each other is key to being successful as Christ's disciple and seeing others brought into right relationship with Jesus. Love is the key to, to peace and calmness and tranquility and unity within our communities, our families, and within our relationships. So let me ask you this today. How important is love? The word love has certainly been tossed around in our culture and our society with attachments to almost just about anything. We use the word uh, extremely loosely and often not putting proper actions to it. When we say, oh, I love that, I love you, I love this. We use the word to describe our emotions when they have been brought to some level of excitement. The next question then would be, I suppose, what happens when the things or the people I claim to love disappoint me or not measure up to my expectation? While many in our present culture would deem love to be a feeling, I would challenge that based on scriptural principle and what Jesus did for us on the cross. Love is a decision. Love is a choice. Love is an action. Love is something that we actually do. Not something that we feel. I understand the emotional attachments. I get it. But love is something we do. This was certainly the overtone that Jesus was instilling into his disciples from John 13, and, and we will see the same approach from the Apostle Paul in our text in a few moments 
Duty never replaces love. So how important is love then? Well, 1 Peter 4.8 sheds some light on the importance of love in our culture, in our relationships, and certainly within our spiritual lives. Here's what it says. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. That's powerful. Notice the wording here, though. Above all, the text says. In other words, everything else must become secondary to loving one another. The word love carries with it the overtone of fervent love. A love that reaches full measure, if you will, like like water that is boiling. Picture that with me. A, a, A pot of water coming to a boil. It begins to gallop or bubbling over. And the expression of that love that reaches its full capacity is what covers sin. It's a fervent love, a full measure love, including everything love. So what does that even mean? Well, what it means is this. When we love each other with a fervent love, even when we get hurt or rejected or disappointment or get laughed at, a fervent love will not react, it will not hate, but in fact will offer forgiveness. And a fervent love will continue to reach out even to those who offend us. Well, that's some kind of love, isn't it? A fervent love covers a multitude of sin. It's all about love, isn't it? When we authentically and genuinely love people like Christ loved us, we are not only displaying His nature within our lives, but we are participating in the restoration and the rebuilding of humanity. We are steering people toward Jesus every time we love them with the love of God. I mean, think about that for a moment. Every time you love somebody with a fervent Christ-like love, you are pointing them toward Jesus. Now, let's read our text from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 13. Here's what it says. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinth church. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. In verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. This particular text is is very familiar at weddings, per se, or anniversaries, and even on Valentine's Day, I suppose. It carries the overtone that love is to be used to provide inspiration and to encourage and to and to right wrongs, etc. While while this is certainly truth, there is much more that Paul is saying here to the Corinthian church. First of all, we recognize that that Paul is addressing this church in regard to their spiritual gifts. 
like, like speaking in tongues and prophesying and displaying their faith and, and giving resources to the poor, etc. These are incredible spiritual dispositions one is to attempt to acquire in this lifetime that we live. But Paul's approach to the Corinthian church is to point them back to the fundamentals. Paul attempts to level the playing field, if you will, here by reminding them, reminding us that everything else must come secondary to loving people. It must come secondary to loving God. And it really is all about love, isn't it? And, and this is the key theme for today's message. The key theme would be to love God is to love others above everything else. To love God is to love others above everything else. Paul is speaking about a certain type of love here. He isn't speaking about eros love or storge love or, or filial love. All appropriate types of love in their proper context of marriage, etc. Paul is speaking here about the highest level of love there is. He's talking about agape love. Now, what is agape love? Well, this is a type of love that we have heard about before. I'm sure you've heard sermons about it. I'm sure you've read articles about it, etc. But this is a type of love that, that we, would all, uh, we all would like to receive but at times may find it difficult to give away. Agape love is this. It's a selfless and sacrificial love. It's a type of love that is unconditional. A type of love that, that's expressed regardless of the person or the context. It's a kind of love that never chooses and picks. It's a kind of love that loves selflessly and sacrificially and unconditionally, regardless of whom it is the love's being expressed to. It's a level of love that loves a person even if they do not deserve to be loved. It's a level of love that actually loves the person who is unworthy of being loved. This agape or selfless love is the love of God, the very love possessed by God himself. But, but not just possessed by God, this type of love is God. I want you to catch this. It's not just some characteristic or some quality of God. No, no, it is God. It is the, the love demonstrated in the cross of Christ. It is the love demonstrated to us from Jesus himself. It is the love of God for the ungodly. It is the love of God for unworthy sinners. It is the love of God for undeserving enemies. Sounds a lot like us before coming to know Jesus, doesn't it? Romans 5, 6 through 8 talks about this. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. In verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Wow, talk about a, an incredible love extended. Agape love is expressed to all people. The ungodly, the unworthy, and the undeserving. But we can sure relate to that at different seasons in our lives, I'm sure. This is the message Paul is communicating to the believer in Corinth. They, they had arrived at a place where they assumed their spiritual gift expressions were going to be enough. And Paul says this, well, 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 what difference does it make how perceived your spirituality is if you do not love people? What difference does it make how spiritual we think we are if we don't love people? 
And Paul is quite specific here in the first three verses. He speaks about how important love is. And and we can know how to speak the tongues of men, earthly languages, and the tongues of angels, heavenly languages. And there's nothing wrong with that. But Paul is challenging us today with this message. What benefit is it to have the knowledge or the spiritual depth without possessing an agape level of love for fellow man? He compares this type of person to a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Now, I've had the privilege of playing in a couple of different symphony bands in my lifetime. And the cymbal, when they are smacked together, if you can picture it with you know, two cymbals being smacked together, uh, when they're smacked together by a person who knows what they're doing, the, the when and, and where to do that, It's actually quite enjoyable. It fits in with the the flow of the music, etc. But when it's smacked together randomly without purpose by a person who has no idea what they are doing, it can be quite an irritating noise to say the least. And this is the comparison that Paul is making to those who possess languages, earthly and heavenly, without having an agape love for others. Just a noisy symbol. He goes on to talk about gaining knowledge and having an ability to prophesy or display a great level of faith. He talks about giving to the poor and helping those in need and sacrificing. And he says, if there's no love, Paul says, we are nothing and we gain nothing. Because it's all about love. So let me be very clear today. Paul is not saying that all of the above is not important. But he is saying without love they really have no value, no purpose, no place. The key is to have God's agape love in our lives when interacting with people on any level. Whether spiritual or earthly. The key is to express the agape love of God in our lives. Then there is an abrupt change in this text, or maybe, uh, you know, he turns the corner on something here. Paul goes from telling us, without love, such and such has no value, to describing for us what true, authentic, pure love is and what it looks like when it's lived out. Let me just say this today. This is a work in progress for all of us. I'm not sure about you, but I'll certainly speak for myself. This is a work in progress for me then. This is not easy to implement, not easy to express, not easy to live out. But I do believe with God's help, a constant awareness and an intentionality to grow, we can be better in this area of love. This Christian walk, it's all about love. Verse 4 to 7 has been read at many weddings. In fact, I've, I've read them many times myself in, in officiating weddings. But this passage is not just a description of agape love. It's not just a definition of the word love. Paul goes much deeper than that here. He, in fact, is laying out for us how, how we are to live as believers in Christ, in our day-to-day interactions with people. Paul is talking about our behavior. He's speaking about our attitudes. He's talking about our lifestyle choices, our responses, our reactions, etc. He's giving us the, the formula uh, to, to how to get through this thing called life and do it with the love of God. Love is patient, it's kind, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not rude, it's not selfish, doesn't get easily angered, doesn't keep a record of all the times a, person's, a person messes up. Let me just pause here for a moment. See, true agape love is not going to remind a person of something they did, say, three years ago or keep bringing up the past. That is not agape love. That's a conditional love. 
Love doesn't get excited when evil takes place. It rejoices when truth is discovered. Love will always protect others. Love will always trust. Love always hopes, always perseveres. In fact, Paul said this in verse 8, which is the, the key verse of today's message. Love never fails. Take a moment, would you, and say that with me. Love never fails. But not just any love. A godly, <coughs> Christ-like love that has captured our hearts as, as God gave us a new nature. This is about constantly overcoming the flesh and allowing Jesus to love in us and love through us. Not so we, we get patted on the back or we get extra attention or maybe our names get put in the newspaper. True love won't care about any of that. It's not looking for accolades. True love never fails because it will always leave an impact on others that has the potential to be life-altering. Now, the reason Paul makes this statement of love never failing is connected to his opening three verses. Spiritual gifts, knowledge, faith, giving, etc. are just earthly, temporal gifts that are used to point people to Jesus. They are spiritual tools, if you will, that allow us to proclaim the gospel. They are not lasting. They're not eternal, but, but true love is eternal. It is everlasting. It is never-ending. It will lead us to Jesus. Now, <clears throat> verse 8, often when read, stops at these words. Love never fails, and we don't continue on. And that's not a bad place to stop, to stop, except this verse has so much more to say. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. This text is a challenge for us not to fix our eyes on the temporal, fading away entities, but to fix our eyes on Christ. Demonstrate, live out His love that we have received in our hearts so that others might come to know Him. See, it's the only thing that will not fade away. It's all about love. Would you say that with me? It's all about love. Agape love was foundational in God's plan and it is still the principle that is woven through the fabric of everything that God is building. His love is what we need and His love is what we need to give away. In verse 9 to 12, Paul reminds us that with serving God, there must be a maturing, a growing in our relationship. He reminds us that this true agape love will, will one day bring us face to face with Jesus. It's only true agape love that will accomplish that. And then we end this chapter with verse 13 where it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. This is a well-known verse. A verse that many people could recite, but what does it actually mean? Well, simply put, faith and hope are likened to spiritual gifts, spiritual principles that will reveal whom it is God is, or a desire to be with God. But love focuses on God Himself. Love is a direct reflection of God's heart that lives within us. Love is the greatest because love is God and God is love. Faith and hope are extremely important as they unpack for us facets of God's heart. But love shows us who God is and reveals His character, His plan for humanity, His desire to have relationship with us. Love or agape love 
is the greatest gift we can receive and the greatest gift we can give anyone because it will never cease to exist. Love is not a feeling. Love is something we live out. Love is something we do. Love is God's gift to us so we can represent His true character to the rest of the world. It's all about love. It's all about love, church. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that you have revealed the agape, unconditional love of your heart to us, to humanity. And with gratitude today, Lord, we say thank you. We receive all that you have for us on the foundation and principle of love. And Lord, would you help us as believers in, that are living in uncertain, unprecedented days to live out in agape love to our fellow man, to our neighbor, to the rest of humanity. Lord, let people see your love in us, through us, in what we say, in what we do, and where we go. God, may we demonstrate Jesus to the people that live around us by our actions, by our agape love. And Lord, let's not get so caught up in displaying righteousness without displaying love first. God, help us. Help us, Lord, to have those values in order of priority. Loving people, loving you, must be primary in our walk with Jesus. We thank you, Lord, today on this Valentine's Day. I pray for relationships. I pray for families. I pray for couples, Lord. I pray that, Lord Jesus, your love would abound in every life today, in every marriage today, every relationship today, God. And Lord, as we receive your love, may we be quick to give it away to other people. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you for joining us online today.